Morning friends, I'm Dr. Professor Rahul Kawatra, Professor Ahead, Department of ENT, Hind Institute of Medical Sciences, Safedabad. So, today in this video demonstration, I'm going to tell you about the instruments that are used in tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy operation. At the outset, before we start, what we need to know is that commonly in the viva about instruments, the examiner wishes to know the name of the instrument, where it is used, that is in what all surgeries it is useful and third point is that how it is used. So the student is supposed to tell the particular step where that instrument is used in that operation and if possible the correct holding technique of that instrument. It gives a good impression. Okay. So without much ado, let us start with the very first instrument which we use in tonsillectomy is these two instrument which are made into one. This is the Boyle's tongue depressor and this is the Davis mouth gag. So it is called as the Boyle's Davis mouth gag. I'm going a bit slow so that you can understand. The parts of this instrument is this tongue blade and there are various sizes to it where you have to actually choose according to the age of the patient as well as the correct distance between the chin and the oral cavity is measured and this length should not exceed beyond the oral cavity. So that is the appropriate size of the tongue blade which you are supposed to be putting in this mouth gag. Okay, And the way it is inserted is like this. So you have to press this ratchet and gradually let it slide down and you this part sits on the tongue and the this part which is this part sits on the upper incisor and gradually this is opened in this manner so that it sits inside and you get a good space to operate upon okay so this is Boyle's Davis mouth gag used for in tonsillectomy surgery, surgeries of the oropharynx, nasopharynx and uh, nasopharyngeal surgeries are adenoidectomy, oropharyngeal surgeries commonly are uh, like your uvulopalatopharyngoplasty and surgeries for sleep apnea sometimes. The limitation of this instrument is that you cannot do surgeries for the floor of the tongue or on the tongue because the tongue depressor sits on the tongue and that thing is obscured. You cannot see that part. Okay. The next instrument that is applied in after opening using this mouth gag is your Megoran's plate which is pushed inside the neck and the shoulder of the patient which is lying in the rose position and once that is placed you take these two prong like things which is called as the Draffin's bipod. So you can see these holes which are there to adjust the height at which this Boyle's Davis mouth gag is going to hang. So we place it like this equidistant and the height that we want is adjusted and the Davis Boyle mouth gag actually sits like this. So you can see the opening here and the Boyle's Davis mouth gag is in its position. The utility of this instrument is that you don't need hands. Right now I am trying to hold it because uh, I don't have any help. but. Uh, on the operating table, this is 
self standing you don't need a assistant to hold this place because it snugly fits into the oral cavity and the counter pressure makes it stand like this so if you consider it like this okay so i would repeat myself again this is boyle's davis mouth gag and this is your megoron's plate and this is your draffen's bipod so all these two instruments are used for all surgeries related to the oral cavity oropharynx and nasopharynx and even palate so you can do angiofibroma surgeries palatoplasties tonsillectomy adenoidectomy and other surgeries okay the next instrument which is there which we come to is this long tooth forcep which is called as vox tonsil dissecting forcep so the characteristic feature about this instrument is that it is long and it has got its tooth which is used for making a dissecting plane while we are doing tonsillectomy so supposing we have got the tonsil of the left side so with the help of another instrument which i'll just tell you about you hold the tonsil retract it and then make an incision in the mucosal fold which is between the tonsillar capsule and the anterior pillar okay so this is vox long tooth forcep used for tonsillar dissection or making incision in the mucosal fold of the while tonsillectomy all right and the instrument which i was telling you about where with which you hold the medial side of the tonsil is this dennis brown tonsil holding forcep so you can see the openings are basically not very sharp so this is how you recognize the instrument it is angulated so you can work inside the oral cavity and it is basically holding there is a common confusion between this instrument as well as a lux forcep which we are not keeping here right now because that i will be talking when we are doing talking about instruments used in the nasal surgery so you need to understand this is a wider opening here on this and it is angulated single angulation is there so you can go in hold the tonsils and retract it medially the other uses of this instrument are it can also be used for holding the anteroconal polyp if you are trying to deliver it via the oral cavity and it can also be used in cardwell lex surgery where you have to remove the hypertrophied mucosa of the maxillary sinus so it's a multi utility instrument and uh, but the primary role the first use of this instrument that every student should tell is it is a tonsil holding forcep dennis brown tonsil holding forcep used for holding the tonsil while doing tonsillectomy surgery okay so another instrument which after giving the incision in tonsillectomy in the mucosal fold and you are holding the tonsil with the medial from the medial side so we are right now discussing about tonsillectomy of a patient who is on the right side my left but patient's right okay this instrument is called as mollison's dissector with anterior pillar retractor so let us see this instrument more carefully if you can see it's got serrations on it to break the fibrous bands while you are dissecting the tonsil from its bed and holding this instrument you retract the tonsil and gradually try to separate out and break the fibrous band keeping the direction of this dissector towards the tonsillar capsule you don't direct it towards the fossa which can cause more injury and more bleeding all right 
and once the tonsil has been dissected out and taken out then again you bring back this instrument for retracting the anterior pillar so it will lift the anterior pillar so that we can visualize the tonsillar fossa more clearly for any residual tonsillar tags or bleeding points which needs to be cauterized at the point at that point of surgery during the post surgery right then we come to this another useful instrument which is called as eaves tonsillar snare so if you see this instrument it has got a wire at its end this is usually a 25 or 26 gauge wire the question is asked about the gauge of the wire so this is around 25 to 26 gauge wire and it, the thickness of the wire is around 0.5 millimeters all right and the instrument is held in this manner as if initially when we used to give injections that is how you hold the syringe and this is how you hold the instrument the eaves tonsillar snare and it is held and another instrument which is passed through the loop through this wire you make a loop out of it and the instrument is passed through it the dennis brown tonsil holding forcep and it you loop out the inferior pedicle of the tonsil and you bring out the tonsil and in, then you gradually press this so that the wire is pulled inside the idea is that this instrument first wire crushes the tonsillar pedicle which helps in releasing the coagulation factors thereby achieving hemostasis and then you further push it in so that it is totally withdrawn inside and it cuts the tonsillar pedicle so thereby you have the tonsil tissue in your Dennis Brown tonsil holding forcep and then you can remove it so that practically completes the surgery of tonsillectomy after the tonsillectomy has been done you place some wet gauze pieces there in the tonsillar fossa again you can use this instrument which is the long bladed uh, long tooth forcep as i told you it is called as wax w a u g h s wax tonsil forcep so you can place those wet gauze pieces in the fossa wait for some time and then gradually try to then you use this instrument mollison's anterior pillar retractor and you retract the anterior pillar and you remove those gauze pieces and then look inside for the bleeder points so if you have got a bleeder you can use during the process of the surgery this is another instrument that is being used commonly in all oral cavity and oropharyngeal surgeries this is called as the yonkers suction cannula so it's a long suction cannula it's blunt so it does it's atraumatic and your assistant generally holds this giving you the space and removing all the secretions and the extra blood that is extra visation there and that is how it is used another thing that you have to tell your assistant is not to actually keep poking it into the tonsillar fossa because then it can cause more bleeding so the position of this yonkers suction cannula is always in the posterior pharyngeal wall space where the secretions will drain down and the it can be sucked in and you get a good space and good visualization of your operating site all right and once those suction and cleaning has been done and you find a bleeder then the next instrument that is there is this burkitt's long artery forcep which is used for clamping the bleeder you have got the bleeder supposing in the tonsillar fossa you localize it after cleaning it with wet gauze piece and you clamp it once that bleeder is clamped it achieves the hemostasis by then you take another 
instrument which is called as the Negus curved artery forcep. Now the use of this curved artery forcep is that you can clamp deeper down. So if you have got like this is your bleeder, if you see, you can clamp it deeper down and you take a bigger area of the vessel which you can clamp and then you can visualize your tip end and another instrument then it comes into the use is this Negus knot director. So when you tie the knot because your hands can't reach deep, you hold this in one end and in the other end you tie the knot and gradually push the knot under the clamp which you have done and then you hold it, pull it and the knot gets tied onto the bleeding vessel and then you gradually ask your assistant to release this Negus curved artery forcep and you take it out and then you, you can use the scissors to cut the tie. Okay. So this is about tonsillectomy briefly and the list of instruments that are used in tonsillectomy.